Hi, I'm Richard Haynes, and these short videos are designed to help clarinet players of all levels. I'll introduce the fundamentals of a range of contemporary playing techniques in the hope that this knowledge will empower you to find your own solutions when called for. Many of us already have a knowledge of microtonality, because when we play music with other instruments, it may be called for to adjust the intonation of certain pitches up or down, so that a chord or interval sounds in tune. The two most well-known examples are major and minor thirds. The A, a major third above an F, will have to be played about 14 cents lower than an equal tempered A on a piano in order to sound in tune. The A flat, however, will have to be played 16 cents higher for the same effect. If you've already encountered this, then you've already begun your journey with microtones and started finding microtonal fingerings. Quarter tones, which equal half a semitone or a quarter of a whole tone, appear frequently in contemporary music for clarinet, and so do other kinds of microtones. Quarter tones look like this. Eighth tones look like this. Here's a diagram of the most frequently called for microtones and their positions on the tuner. If you're used to finding quarter tones, other microtones will be easy, so that's what we're going to look at today. Generally speaking, quarter tone fingerings are ones that raise or lower a conventional chromatic fingering by about 50 cents. Take a look at your tuner. On either end of the scale, you'll see the minus 50 and plus 50 indications. This is the location of the quarter tone. Not every quarter tone can be perfectly intonated. The goal is to be as close as possible. If you have two tuners, you can calibrate one to your local tuning pitch and one to a quarter tone lower so that you can check your spot on quarter tone tuning. There are also a whole range of apps that are useful when tuning quarter tones. Cleartune, for example. Okay, now we're going to look at four ways to find a quarter tone fingering. We're going to do this by one, raising the lower neighboring chromatic pitch by a quarter tone, two, lowering the upper neighboring chromatic pitch by a quarter tone, three, approaching the quarter tone from a distance of two or three quarter tones, and four, combinations of these three. For all of these possibilities, we're looking at finding concrete fingerings and not vague half-holing scenarios. We want to find fingerings that are easy to employ in the moment. Let's start with option one, raising the lower neighboring chromatic pitch by a quarter tone to get a clarion G quarter flat. To do this, I'm gonna take the chromatic fingering for a clarion F sharp, and then add the fork key to this fingering to raise it by a quarter tone. Let's try option number two, lowering the upper neighboring chromatic pitch by a quarter tone to get a clarion E quarter flat. So we're gonna start with a clarion E and then add the low E key to the E fingering. Let's try option three, approaching the quarter tone from a distance of two or three quarter tones. First of all, to get a throat A quarter sharp, and then an altissimo D quarter sharp. So for the A quarter sharp, we've got the throat A fingering, and if we add any keys to this, we see that we can only get semitones. Or maybe a whole tone in the case of the fourth side key. So one way of doing this is going a step lower, and adding keys to the G-sharp fingering. Okay, there are some nice possibilities here. My personal favourite is adding the third side key with the right hand. Let's compare that to the A. And now 
moving on to the altissimo D quarter sharp. So you've got your high D fingering. Now we want to go a quarter step higher than this. My personal favorite fingering here is taking the fingering for a D quarter flat, which is like the D fingering, but adding a fourth finger of the right hand. And then to this fingering, we're adding the throat G sharp key. So we've gone down a quarter tone step and then up by two quarter tones by adding the throat G sharp key. And finally, I'm going to illustrate option number four, which is a combination of any of these first three rules by showing you a fingering for the elusive clarion D quarter flat. So what we've got is a C sharp fingering, and then we're going to lift off the pointer finger of the left hand. And then we're going to add the low E key. And then we're going to lower the pointer finger of the left hand down onto the tone hole very slightly to adjust the intonation. It's quite a resistant fingering, but it is there. Let's have a look at the same note on bass clarinet. So on bass clarinet, we're going to take the same starting point, the clarion C sharp. It's best to take it with the left hand pinky finger, and then we're going to lift off the right hand ring finger or the fourth finger. And then add the key covering the low G hole. Okay, so I'm going to turn around the bass clarinet and have a look here. That's this key here. It's connected to the low G key by this system here and we're going to depress it with the right hand pinky finger. The ring finger of the right hand stays off the instrument and then we're going to add with the right hand thumb the side keys three and four. These two side keys raise the pitch. It's a complicated fingering, but it's worth noting because this pitch does come up from time to time in the contemporary repertoire for clarinet. There are stacks of quarter tone fingering charts out there, both printed and digital in varying degrees of thoroughness. So if you're having trouble, just check one of those or send me a message via my website, richardehaines.com. Remember, to find a quarter tone fingering or any other microtonal fingering, Start by raising the lower neighbouring chromatic pitch. If that doesn't work, try lowering the upper neighbouring chromatic pitch. If that doesn't work, go a bit further afield and approach the microtone from a distance of more than a quarter tone or a semitone. Perhaps there are some solutions there. And if that doesn't work, try a combination of all of these. There are some surprising nooks and crannies of the clarinet to discover. So don't give up hope, there's always a solution. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos about the clarinet.